It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show love, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show love, get your shine on. Candy fresh, candy fresh, candy fresh, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show love, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show love, get your shine on. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? All right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us for the sweetest show in the Twin Cities, Candy Fresh. Now, let's give it up for our band before we get started. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's give it up for our band. It's Friday, y'all. Let's give it up for our band. There we go, there we go. Well, we thank you all for coming tonight to our second episode of the fifth season. This episode is all about HBCUs. HBCUs in the house? Woo! All right. Uh, so I am your host, Shakira, two times. I'm holding it down while Miss Anahita is on vacation. She will be back next time. So I hope you all enjoy this, this uh, episode. It's going to be a fun-filled time. We've got a lot in store for you all. And we, of course, have to give it up for our sponsors. I want to give it up for Children's Minnesota. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Special shout-out to James Burroughs. And I also want to give it up for the National Endowment of the Arts. Let's, without further ado, let's get this party started, y'all. All right, everybody, welcome to our second episode of season five of the sweetest show in the Twin Cities. Now, to my right, I have a FAMU alumni and somebody who I just recently learned is also a Burnsville Blaze alumni. Yes. Shout out to Burnsville. <laughs> uh, I want to go ahead and introduce Miss Kimberly Rambo. How are you doing tonight, Kimberly? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm good, so happy good, to good, have good. a fellow Burnsville Blaze in yes, the building. Yes, yes. Um, but more importantly, right, it's HBCU night. So Indeed. we're here to talk about you and your experience. Please tell us a little bit about your experience going to an HBCU and let us know if that was like a culture shock because I know Burnsville, <laughs> Burnsville, Minnesota. <laughs> To FAMU. Tell us a little bit yes, about that. Yes, indeed. So thank you for that intro, by the way. Um, yes, so I was born in Minnesota. Um, went to Burnsville, of course. You know how it was. Um, I wouldn't say it was a culture shock because I had family down in Georgia, Albany, Georgia, which is like an hour and a half away if you've got a lead foot like me. Um, but it wasn't so much of a culture shock because I was back and forth to Albany and everything like that. So I think the only thing that it was for me I was shocked about this is the first time I'm having like a shot at freedom, mm. you know? So you really have to be careful with what that means. Mm. And 
there were some ups and downs, of course, but it was definitely an experience I would definitely do over again, I would say, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So we, you know, we took different paths, right? I went to St. Cloud State, so gotcha. a, little, a little different gotcha. than FAMU. As you know? long as you go. Right, right, <laughs> but a little bit different. And I, and I always say, um, I think it's really, really important for, you know, our young black kids to have that experience. Indeed. So tell us about your favorite part about attending an HBCU. What I will say is important is the fact that you will, see we went to Burns, but we didn't get the whole um, culture learning that we should have gotten mm -hmm. um, about our history and what it means to be black, what it is our experience was. You know, they didn't tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite part was learning that this was the first time, when I went to FAMU, it was the first time I was learning about real black culture and what it meant for that. Now, of course, you know, they think HBCUs, of course they think college, period, you're gonna go party. And that is all true. <laughs> it is true, but the experience is what you make it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my favorite thing about it. The experience is what you make it. You know, you meet people, they're your family for the rest of your life, you know, um, but it's really what you make it. And I think the autonomy over that is probably the best thing because you're really learning about who you are and you're setting the precedent of who you want to be and how you want to be. So, yeah. yeah, and I know you took full advantage of that experience and took a lot of gems with you that you brought back mm -hmm. home here to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you're doing now, you know, post-school, post-college, and how you're kind of going back into the community yes. and, and taking those things that you learned. Of course. So right now I'm um, working at Thomson Reuters, um, which we're called The Answer Company, based in Egan. Um, I majored in criminal justice. I'm doing legal research right now. But while that is my profession, my passion still lies in HBCU work, college, everything like that. You know, just making sure the community knows that they have that option, especially the community that looks like us. Yes. Um, there are many paths that you can go, but I will say education is one thing that you, you know, that can't be taken away from you. And what I'm doing right now is I'm working with a couple of individuals, some of them are in this room right now. Um, we are actually doing or forming a nonprofit called Minnesota HBCU Alumni, and we're working mm. on getting the, you know, paperwork and everything situated, but what what I will say is we have the interest. You know, we had a, uh, not the first gathering, but one of many. There have been many efforts to get us together. And what we're trying to do right now is plant a seed for our HBCU alumni and for the community to see and know that the HBCU alumni here is represented. And you'll see some of us, you, some of us are in the crowd today. Um, but it's just about letting the community know that we are here. We want to network. We want to make sure that we, the students actually on their way now, um, probably are already there. Um, at school right now, we just had an HBCU send off. And we gave away, it was our first one, um, about 750 to those students. Um, and on top of that, we still have more. So it was just, we're, we're about planting a seed. Yeah. You know, that was our inaugural HBCU send off, the first one. So our first baby, but we had a wonderful time. And what I will say, if there's any alumni or students or anybody interested in what it means to, you know, have that HBCU culture, let us know. We're at Minnesota HBCU alumni on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, et cetera. And if you have any questions, of course, hit me up, Kimberly Rambo. But yes, um, we're, I'm working with some wonderful HBCU alumni who are definitely passionate about the same thing. Yeah, and I can just completely tell, I'm sure we all can <laughs> tell how passionate you are about it. Like that was absolutely amazing. And it sounds like it's your baby right now and yes, it's something that's gonna yes. blossom into something so much we bigger. We hope so, we hope absolutely. so. Absolutely, I mean, first year and you've already had a, a huge event where mm -hmm. you're giving back and you're helping mm -hmm. out the community. Um, for let's say a young girl or a young man who's watching right now and yes. they're on the fence, right? They're not sure mm. if they wanna go to an HBCU. What is the best advice that you would give them to kind of push them in that direction? What I will say is that is going to be like the Mecca. They call Howard the Mecca. But what it really is, is the, the gem about it is you are, and I'll speak to us, you're going to be in a community where there are so many people of color, black people actually, mm -hmm. who are educated. Mm -hmm. The professors care about you. Mm -hmm. This is an experience that one you will never, never have if you do not go to an HBCU. This is something that should be cherished, and this is the, the thing that you will experience because there's a reason why they're attacking affirmative action. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why there are activists attacking business resource groups that are about women, black people, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. So don't pass up the chance. H, you know, HBCUs will always be there. If it's something that you're entertaining, I would say definitely 
get more information, but ask an alum, ask students, ask current students. Get all the information you can, get the research done, and just really pray about it and see how you feel. Well, I don't know about y'all, but that answer gave me the chills. I want to know, like, <laughs> is, is, is 32 old? Like, can I Look, still? Go ahead and go. Like, what, what, what <laughs> you can, can be I a do? freshman at any age. I love that. I love, that. I love the passion behind it. Um, we definitely need more people like you and more people like the folks in the We're audience there, that, yeah. that, you know, really care about the community and have mm -hmm. actually walked the walk, right? Yes, you are yes, a girl yes. born and raised in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You went to that school, you know, came back with so mm -hmm. many tools, and now you're indeed, applying it. Indeed. So. Absolutely amazing. Very <laughs> thank awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to know. I know you said your nonprofit is early, right? Mm -hmm. What plans do you have for the future of your nonprofit? Well, really, we just want to continue networking with each other first to learn what our separate passion and passions are. You know, we're looking for people with different skills and utilizing those skills to impact our youth. So we want to continue to getting to know each other mm -hmm. and see what that vision is going to be. Of course, there is a vision. You know, we want to have an impact on the community, but what does that look like for everyone? So yeah. we're just going to continue shaping, you know, our mold, and then we're going to present it to the community in a way that we know how. Absolutely. <laughs> the so HBCU way. <laughs> exactly. I love that. So what point in your college career did you decide that, you know, when I'm done with my degree, when I'm ready to come back home, this is what I want to do. I want to pour into mm -hmm. my community and kind of help repeat this cycle that you were able to go through and finish? What's interesting is I will say I didn't have any vision like this until maybe last year. Mm. Um, I graduated in 2017 and I came back home to Minnesota in 2018 and I've been here ever since, but I can't say that I had a vision about this that whole time. Mm. Last year was when it kind of just clicked for me. I'm mm. passionate about HBCUs. I was writing something in my notebook and that's one thing about it. You write something down and it you know comes to fruition. So there was a vision, there was a conversation, there were more conversations, and now we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what you want to do, you know what you, um, what impact you want to have, and you get with like-minded individuals and you do it. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened well, there. I have to give it to you, Kimberly. That's a very quick turnaround. You said you wrote it down a year ago, <laughs> and it's already like it, yeah. in front of you. You already have the plan. It's already planned out. It's, it's already mapped people. out. It's the people. It's yeah. the great people that I'm working with. You know, yeah. I can't take the full credit. You know. So <laughs> humble. I love that. Now you told us where we can follow you, where we can follow your your nonprofit. But mm -hmm. I'm interested to know if somebody wanted to get involved behind the scenes and be a part of the team, what would that process look like? Well, if you're an HBCU alum, of course we're looking for you. We want you to um, get in contact with us. There's a Google task force, uh, or excuse me, a Google group that we have, and there's about 140 of us. We share information there. Um, you can also just contact me. I have the uh, general interest form that we have for HBCU alum, but we're looking for anyone with skills, anyone that's that has that HBCU experience or is seeking that HBCU experience to come on board and help us create an impact and set the vision for what we want to do. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for everything you're doing in the community. I'm definitely going to give you a follow. <laughs> I hope you all do the same. Please tell us one more time where we can follow you of and course. your nonprofit. So my name is Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I. Rambo, like the movie. Mm -hmm. um, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram. Our nonprofit that we're getting ready to form is also on LinkedIn. There's a Facebook group. Um, and we also have Instagram as well. Just type in MNHBCU alumni and you should be able to find us. Perfect. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Kimberly, y'all. Thank you.
It's your mama, said I. It's your mama, your mama. Brooklyn in the house. St. Paul's in the house. Okay. Minneapolis in the house. Candy Crush in the house. 651 in the house. All the ladies in the house. Yeah, baby, come on. Baby, come on. Baby, come on. Oh, when you walk by every night, talking sweet and looking fine. Oh, when you walk by every night, talking sweet and looking fine. I get kind of hectic inside. And baby, I'm so into you. Darling, if you only knew all the things that flow through my mind. But it's just a sweet, sweet. today I have a dynamic duo. I have Sahara and Satara with Love First Community Engagement. Everybody give it up for them. So, so, so word on the street is y'all are an amazing organization um, taking young women from all over the Twin Cities on tours to, to tour HBCUs. Is that right? That's correct. All right. Tell us a little bit about your organization and what you do. Yeah. So at Love First Community Engagement, we are a nonprofit um, focused on breaking the school to prison pipeline mm. and building the school to success pipeline for black youth in the Twin Cities. Um, we primarily work out of St. Paul. And our goal with the HBCU tour is to provide the experience for as many black young girls as possible that wouldn't normally have access to travel or take that opportunity to experience. Now, I just want to stop you there. You said you want to break and end the prison, the school to prison pipeline. Yeah. That's huge. So for those of y'all who are listening, for folks who are listening and don't know exactly what that is, talk a little bit about that and what y'all are doing to end that. Mm. So the school to prison pipeline is the idea, kind of like, w w let's bring Lauren Hill in the space, right? Yes, so yes. we think about the miseducation, right? Mm -hmm. The miseducation of black young people in public schools or in the school system, period. And it kind of puts them on a track, the idea that you can't be yourself, right? Mm. Um, if you are dressed the wrong way, if you speak too loud, if you um, speak up too much for yourself, or mm -hmm. you're critically thinking too hard, right? Mm -hmm. Questioning 
in the system that you get punished for that. And we see a lot of suspensions, we see a lot of expulsions of young black students, especially black girls. And not in the same ways that we see it for black boys, right? For black girls, we have, you know, oh, um, you're showing too much, mm. right? The over-sexualization, mm. um, you're too loud, brown girl, what's up with your hair, mm. right? Um, the nitpicking, the colorism. Mm. And so those things don't make us feel good as black girls and black women, and it makes it harder for us to learn. And so the school to prison pipeline is the, the honing in on those things and creating this pipeline to prison. Um, the way that we seek to break that is by providing radical education, mm -hmm. providing knowledge to our young clients, um, and providing economic stability in certain ways so that children can focus on learning. Yeah, so in a nutshell, y'all are changing lives early at that. So that is, let's give, let's give them a round of applause. That is absolutely amazing, yes. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the experience because, again, growing up in Minnesota, just being able to, you know, go outside the bounds and go visit and go travel and see these, these schools, tell us a little bit about that experience and how, how that's changed your life. Um, so, first of all, her and her wife, they took, like, 25 girls and put mm -hmm. us all together of all different ages. And we had to do a few... Um, bond building meetings but even then towards the end we all got together with no drama or pettiness on the on the trip going from state to state we were all on the bus singing going out to eat and just even then hearing some girls actually getting to stop at their dream colleges and even some for the ones who weren't sure about the college route that was okay too it was just like okay come along and see and they have con convinced me to apply to for my spring semester. So it put me into a di lot of different positions work-wise. So that was, it was a nice girl building experience, but also different for a lot of us young black women because we never know what to expect. We thought it wasn't, oh, you got to dress like this for the trip. It wasn't, oh, you're too loud. All this, like all of our personalities, even me being able to be dressed like this, they have never said anything. They were like, okay, if that's what you want to do, then it was a lot of support. So that's absolutely amazing, being able to go into a space where you're fully embraced and you get to be 100% you and show who you are. And like you said, with no pettiness, no drama, that's huge. And that's, that's a really awesome opportunity. Tell us a little bit more about the tour itself, what schools you went to, how long the tour was. Okay. Um, so, so I took my tour a little bit over a year ago, y'all, so bear with me. But um, I know for one, we did go to, one of my favorites was CSU. Uh, Central State University, that was a really big one. We went to, I would say Tennessee State, that was TSU, that was really fun. And I don't really remember too much of like the specific school names and names. I know we went to Cincinnati. Uh, the oh, the Underground Railroad Museum. And they also showed us different cultures about the HBCU. So the Fried Chicken Wednesdays, we went to the game, we got to see the majorettes. We did a HBCU scavenger hunt. That was so much fun. We got to meet um, a lot of the the HBCU's royalties. I still have some of them on Instagram to this day that they still talk to me and connect with. I met, um, what was the smaller one? Uh, oh, Frisk, Fisk. Yeah, that was a really cool one. I was. They had a lot of historical, that tour really stuck with me that, out of the, all the schools because it was a lot of deeper meanings and stories that he gave us with the tour and certain stuff that was just like so delicate where certain places we couldn't even go we just had to hear the history behind it so that was a big thing and also we had a lot of hbcu graduates on the tour so looking at they had their favorite schools and getting to see them rep their different states so that was a really big fun part of it and the tour is for, last year the tour was six days. So as she mentioned, we toured all those schools. And the alumni she's referencing are our chaperones. So not only do we take black girls, 
but we take black women chaperones and even our bus driver, our charter bus driver was a black woman. And that's important to us because when you have black women in the space, it's really healing, it's really magical, right? And so we talk about going to the National Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati, we're looking at all this history, the slavery, right, the trauma, um, the generational trauma that our ancestors before us experienced. And it's important to continue to have a group that's healing. Mm. Um, um, lead that tour. So, yeah. so Sitara, this sounds like a life-changing experience. How long have you been doing this? Um, this will be our second year. So last year, oh. actually, Sahara was a part of our first cohort, mm -hmm. um, and we hope to build it out and continue to do it. Um, this will be our second year going. That's absolutely amazing. I was not expecting you to say that. Um, that's, like I said, sign me up. But um, similar to our first guest, uh, this sounds like something that has been rolled out and been planned and been waiting to be executed for a very long time. Where did this idea come from? And tell us a little bit about the process of growing this organization and getting a, it off its feet. Yeah, so my wife, um, Chantal Allen, she is currently on the St. Paul School Board mm -hmm. here, and we're both educators, and she's for a long time wanted to do an HBCU tour, and so when we had the opportunity to get Love First off the ground, we've been a 501c3 now for two, a little over two years. Mm -hmm. um, we started in 2020 by providing um, mutual aid for the community during COVID. We just kind of crowdsource, use community connections to um, pass out masks and sanitizer at each Cub Foods in St. Paul, right? So we just popped up passing out free stuff for folks who didn't have it. And then from there, when the unrest happened, right, we know George Floyd, um, R.I.P. George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And so when the unrest happened, we're actually activists as well. We mm. thought, oh, well, how are the children, right? And she thought, how are the children? And so we did our first event at Maxfield Elementary in the, in the playground and just mm. kind of gave away, you know, slides and there was ice cream, there's toys and there's music and um, it's just creating safe space for young people to be in. So that's how the organization started. Mm -hmm. And then when we were able to get everybody together, we were just like, hey, this is what we're doing. So I came on last year and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do the HBCU tour. We have to do it for black girls. We have mm -hmm. to do it with black women. And we just took it from there. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, that's a whole team and there's so many different things that you all do. Even when I asked, it's a long laundry list of things. <laughs> How can we expect to see y'all expand and grow? What other things are you looking forward to in the future? Oh yeah, um, we are we are doing a lot. We do a lot of community engagement. Um, as I mentioned, we have a mutual aid program. We also have a group called Glow and Grow. Mm. It is for black girls as well because that's my jam. Mm -hmm. And so we meet after schools. We'll be meeting on the first and third Wednesdays in October. Mm. Um, we're at the Bi Hack, so it's the Black Youth Healing Arts Center mm -hmm. over on Weston and Lafon, and we're community partners, so we'll be in that space. We also do a Glow Up conference at the end of the year, uh, at the end of the Glow and Grow program, and so it's about again healing of our mind, body, and spirit, mm -hmm. um, and we work with a bunch of different community leaders in order to do that. Perfect, perfect. And then I just want to ask you, young lady. You said that by the end of the tour, you knew where you wanted to go, and you are attending in the spring. Is that correct? Uh, yes, not at HBCU right now, mm -hmm. but yes, I'll be going to a MCTC in spring for the spring semester. But right now, uh, Sartara and Chantel actually have me doing, I'm doing overdose prevention in the North Minneapolis areas helping ages all over to prevent, oh, and stop the bleed trainings on how to stop traumatic bleeds, such mm. as gunshots or stab wounds, or how to simply just prevent an overdose by using the naloxone needles and handing oh. off the fentanyl test strips. But ensuring safety, so I'm doing it in different locations in the North Minneapolis area, soon to branch over St. Paul, Lake, Sh Lake Street, all those types of things right now. Well, that's a, let's give her a round of applause, because that's amazing. She said that's so casual, and anyways, I'm saving the world, but anyway, that is absolutely amazing. The Thank reason you. I asked you about uh, you know, what decision you're making and what you want to do next is because it's very clear that this program is life-changing. So I'm just curious to know, um, 
during your time in the program doing the tours and connecting with the program and getting involved as it sounds like in a leadership role, what is the biggest thing you've learned and what's something you would tell a young lady who's interested in getting involved? Um, if you have something that you want to do that you're just dead set on doing, make keep that and you, you will find the right people. Doesn't matter how it comes. Because me and Sitar have only been working for, it's about to be a year. But mm. so much has been done. And they mm. put me and introduced me to so many people in just a little bit of time. Mm. And changed a lot of things for me. So I would say, but they didn't fight with me. They're like, you have to go to college. You have to do this. They were like, okay, if that's what you're doing, then mm. this is where we're going to do. This is the steps you need to take it. So a lot of people will say that's not able to work. But if you ha know what you want to do, just do it. Absolutely. Your, your group will find you. Absolutely. And y'all have definitely found each other. Like I said, the dream team. We said that from the beginning, right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So I do want to ask you this, even the name, Love First, right? It, it gave me the chills when I was looking into you all and looking into all the, the dope things that you do in the community. This is a, a fairly new group, a fairly new nonprofit. Where did you come up with and brainstorm that name? And when you came up with it, what, what in your head went off like, this is it, this is the one? Mm -hmm. So um, again, I'm gonna reference my wife. She is the founder of the organization. And she um, used to work at Como High School with Miss mm -hmm. Neal. Um, if you don't know who Teresa Neal is, she's a beautiful woman in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, she, all, she was the principal at the time and she always loved on the students first. That's mm -hmm. how she operated. And so Chantal took that name and then when we were researching, it was like, what would Jesus do? Love first. So we continue to kind of grow it from there. I absolutely love that, and y'all are killing it in the community. Again, a laundry list of amazing things you're doing for the young girls. Before uh, we finish here, I do want to ask, because you, 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 know, you said your focus is young women. How young? What are the age groups of women, young women who can join and get started with you all? Yeah, for our after-school program, we, it's from 12 to 18. We do middle and high school. Um, and then with the HBCU tour, it's high school, high school specific. Um, and our mutual aid program is 16 to 24. So anybody can get involved and you can find us at Love First Twin Cities on Instagram. Um, we're Love First Community Engagement on Facebook and then we have website as well. Perfect, thank you ladies so much.
VIP. Christina Sophia. You can follow me on all platforms. iTunes, Spotify, Christina Sophia Music. Thank you. And YFM. You are favorite music, right? <laughs> All right, y'all, welcome back to our second episode of Candy Fresh, all about HBCUs. Now, it wouldn't be an HBCU episode if it if we didn't have the MPHC. Let's give them a round of applause, y'all. Awesome. So I have a, a bunch. It's a party up here, as you can see, right? I have a great group of individuals, and I think I'm going to get a chance to hear from all of y'all. But I'd like to get started with this gentleman. Tell us a little bit about who you are, who you're representing, and about the MPHC. Perfect. Absolutely. My name is Isaiah Walker. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I attended Tuskegee University, and there I bestowed the honor of becoming a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. We are the first intercollegiate black college fraternity for all of HBCUs and for all of D9. We set the tone, we set the precedence for the foundation of all the beautiful organizations you see up here today. And from that point and from our founders, our seven founders building that foundation, it's become an epicenter in our communities and representing our community and uplifting those around us to have the best foundation of education and solid principles to be the greatest version. Let's give Isaiah a round of applause. That was an introduction. I don't know about y'all, but that was an introduction. Well, we're really happy to have you here. I definitely want to, I have a lot, we have a lot to cover, but I just want to ask you personally, uh, we just wrapped up uh, Greek Week Minnesota, right? Tell us a little bit about that. So for me, coming from the South, it's a completely different culture. So I'm used to a different level of like interaction and intimacy between black people. Um, here, it's a little bit different, but in all of the ways that I didn't feel as much like I was at home or in the South or around my black people or good food and good music, like literally every day of the week, I tried to find that as an opportunity to step up and to serve and to help make more of those environments and atmospheres for those who are here. And hopefully within my time being here until I leave, I pray that I can be an impact to bringing that type of culture to the North. And um, uh, I pray that it can continue to grow and evolve from that point. Perfect. I mean, I have to imagine that was quite a culture shock, right, coming mm -hmm. here to Minnesota. So tell us how the Divine Nine has allowed you to, you know, just like you said, feel still like you're at home in a sense and feel welcomed and branch out and network and meet other like-minded people. Well, absolutely. It was my mentor, who is an alpha as well, who attended the Gamma Phi chapter at Tuskegee University, and he just encouraged me of the power that you can get when you put yourself in a different environment. He said, if I was a fish and I put you in a, a small pond, it's only so big that you can grow, but if I'm a fish and I put you in the ocean, you have a limitless space of capacity that you can continue to step into. So for me, being coming and taking that leap of faith to get here, it was like God honored every single decision that I made in doing so and connecting me with the brotherhood of brothers who I have from all over the world. He's from the Bahamas. I'm going to let him talk as well. But, um, yeah, just, just to connect with brothers who are like-minded and are a part of that same mission of building and bringing that atmosphere to the people around us has been very, very big. And the D9 specifically is some of my first work starting to get on this level of being able to work with the guys you see up here today and the young ladies. And for me, it's like it's been an honor to serve alongside. And I feel like the value that everybody carries is the value that they're willing to push into the community to give impact to others. And I feel like these have literally been a star-studded crew that I've been honored to be a part of. Amazing. I can tell I'm surrounded by greatness, so I agree with that. Um, now, uh, before we pass the mic, I just want to ask you, because like you said, your fraternity set the president, right? And I can just tell, like, you are definitely a leader. Um, now, you said you're leaving soon, you said before you leave Minnesota. So what do you have up your sleeve for yourself, for your fraternity, for the community before you um, leave Minnesota? Well, definitely, first of all, we're servants of all. So service is the epicenter of what I want that to look like. So I'm at the point now, I'm trying to start my own business. It's called Spread Love United. And similar to a lot of the nonprofits you saw here today, I really believe that my life's motto is to spread love. Mm -hmm. And in whatever way, in whatever level, and whoever you are, wherever you are, 
we all each have the opportunity to be the greatest versions of ourselves first and then teach other people to do the same and just spread love and impact. So I see that around me there's so much potential um, and I'm not going to leave here unless I really spark out all of the potential that I see and it first starts with the community to answer your question. And second is taking these nonprofits, taking these organizations and really making the best events that Minnesota has ever seen. So until that box is checked, God has me working, so. I love it, we love to see it. Thank you so much. Let's give him a round Absolutely. of applause, y'all. Yeah. All right, now for you, sir, go ahead and introduce yourself as well. How y'all doing? Uh, my name is Makai Mason. Uh, my, I was originally born in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, came to Minnesota when I was 17 to uh, do school and I've been there ever since. Awesome. I'm also part of the uh, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated as well. Awesome, awesome. Tell us about your journey with Alpha Phi Alpha and what you've done so far your time here in Minnesota. Uh, my journey has been very, I would say it's been very interesting, uh, mainly because, you know, my, what, what really drove me to Alpha Phi Alpha uh, Fraternity Incorporated was the brotherhood. Mm. Uh, coming from the Bahamas, I've been surrounded by black people uh, my whole life. Come to Minnesota, it was a little bit different. Um, so, you know, I, it, it wasn't really about uh, only, you know, being around black people. It was about being around people who loved me for who I was. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've received that ever since. So, um, like, I, like my brother Isaiah said, every uh, organization has been uh, very welcoming to me as, as a Bohemian, as, as of someone who is not from the United States. And I can't say thank you uh, more than that, so. Absolutely. So it's uh, it's very clear. It's very obvious that you have found brotherhood and Alpha Phi Alpha. For a young young man that might be sitting and watching this episode, right? Mm -hmm. What is some advice you would give to maybe push him to learn more about the organization and possibly be a part of it? I would say go out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's number one, uh, number like top of the bar. Uh, for me, I would have to change how you know when I when I went into the office um, when I first came out of, out of undergrad, I would go into the office and like I said. Minnesota isn't like the Bahamas, so I'd have to change how I talk. Mm -hmm. I'd have to change, uh, you know, just a lot of aspects about me. But um, what what that taught me was that it's not really changing myself. It's really improving, like how I how I want to be seen, how I want to uh, talk to people, how I want people to see me. Um, so I would say just go out of your comfort zone because that would change literally everything about how people see you and mm -hmm. how you see yourself internally. So. Um, comfort zone. I'd say comfort zone, really finding a way to, to step out of what you usually do on a day-to-day -day basis yes. and just improve on that every day. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Let's give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> All right, young lady, go ahead and introduce yourself and your organization. My name is Sharika Doe. I'm a member of Alpha Alpha Kappa Sorority Incorporated, the yeah. first all-black female sorority founded in 1908 at Howard University. Let's give her a round of applause. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I, I am also the vice president over the MPHC at this time serving in the community. Let's give a round of applause. That's absolutely amazing. We're very happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. um, now, I just want to dive right in because as we were we briefly spoke about, we just wrapped up Greek Week. So um, you, were the, you were the fuel behind all of this. So tell us a little bit about what that is for those who don't know and uh, the role that your organization served and that you served in this in that week. So the Greek Weekend is a collective of all the Divine Nine. We get together, we do a school supply drive, we have a fun hour for us, we do a picnic, we do a church service and a brunch. But in that weekend, we give back mm -hmm. to the black community. Mm -hmm. So everything we do is a black owned business. Mm -hmm. It's the black schools that are in Minneapolis and now we did one in St. Paul as well this year. So we give back to low income families that uh, we do Elizabeth Hall this year, uh, every year. Those kids really appreciate the school supplies that they get mm -hmm. because school supplies have went up a lot since, <laughs> since I had kids, my kids were little, and it's a great give back. Also knowing that all of these organizations up here, we encourage growth in African-American children. We give scholarships to kids to go to college, to keep their college dream alive, mm -hmm. We foster in mind sisterhood and a service to all mankind. 
Absolutely. That's a beautiful mission behind. And that's a lot. In a, you said in a weekend, y'all do it all. Y'all. Yeah. So <laughs> how long has that been going on here in Minnesota for those who may not know? We started the school supply drive. Greek Weekend has been since the organization started. We started the school supply maybe four years ago Amazing. as a service project. Absolutely amazing. And obviously, it, it takes a lot. It takes a team, right? And y'all, I mean, here, we, we have a team here. So tell us a little bit about the process, just getting ready and building up for that weekend before it kicks off. We, well, I have a committee. Yes, yes, ma'am. And ma me and that committee, we get to work. We sit down and plan. Mm -hmm. We call. It's hard to find black businesses, so we mm -hmm. ask for people to give us information because we want to support you. Yes, yes. We want to give back to those black dollars. Yes, absolutely. I, let, let's give a round of applause for that. Okay. So we just get our part together. We get everybody to pitch in, mm. and we come together as a family. Absolutely. That's what it's about. Yes. And y'all are making a big difference in the community. I hope that you all go on vacation once the week is up because yes. I'm sure there's a lot that goes into that, right? Uh, it's not too late. Um, but I just want to ask you, for folks who want to support for next year, where can they find you all? Where can they follow you? And where can they support? We do have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. It would be NPHC. Is it St. Paul, Minneapolis? Minneapolis, St. Paul? I, MSP, okay. HPC, MSP. They can follow us there. We will post when we have events. We will post when we're doing community service. If it's open people, we just want people to come out and support. Mm -hmm. And we also support when each of our orgs are doing a service project. So that or community service for people to come out and support. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for everything you're doing in the community. Let's give her a round of applause. All right, now I'm moving over to my right side now. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with first? What's your name, sir? Yes. Hello, kings and queens. Oh. My, name, my name is Dwayne Martin. I'm a proud member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. I graduate of Prairie View a and also the place uh, where we also give Sandra Bland tours at Prairie View as well. Absolutely amazing. Let's give this gentleman a round of applause. <laughs> yes, yes. We're so happy to have you here, sir. Um, so I just want to talk about, uh, just as we talked about on the left side here, we just wrapped up a very important weekend um, for your fraternity, for your organization, and for all of Divine Nine. Tell us a little bit about, your, from your perspective, about Greek Weekend. Yes. I, I, I am also the Community Outreach Officer for the NPAC, the National Panel Council. So, so I'm, over, I'm over all the programming there. So as for, to echo what Sister Sherry said about the unity of the Divine Nine. The Black Week Weekend is, is a weekend for us to expose our coming uh, service uh, mindset, but also to show the community of the unity of the Divine Nine as a whole. And uh, the highlight of it would be our picnic, where we all come together, and that's the highlight of that entire weekend. That's so, it, so I gotta ask you, is that your per that's your personal highlight, or that's like, we all know what's up. We know that's the best part. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> No, for me, the uh, highlight for me was the uh, first time having St. Paul. I'm a I'm St. Paul resident. So when we had the uh, St. Paul uh, school supplies there at mm -hmm. St. Paul City Schools, that was a highlight um, for me. Absolutely. I, I love that. I love that. So you said you're a St. Paul resident, right? So how, for folks that are maybe just visiting or even like these young gentlemen who came from different places around the world, right, and are now residents of Minnesota, what's something that you would want them to know about the Divine Nine, and just about our black community here in Minnesota, because a lot of folks don't know about us, you know? So what is something you would tell somebody, a passerby, that doesn't know much about the Divine Nine presence in Minnesota? Well, first of all, that we're here, we are alive and well. Yes. Uh, George Floyd made, made, made that announcement. But the unity that we are black professional, black men and women, yeah. and we are strong here in, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's give him another round of applause, everybody. <laughs> They're playing hot potato. All right, young lady. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Quivel Roberts, and I am a proud member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> All right. So tell me a little bit about your org, yourself, and what brings you here this evening? Okay, well, uh, Sigma Gamma Rho was founded on November 12th, 
1922, and one of the great things about Sigma Gamma Rho, when you want to talk about determination and resilience, is that Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated is the only sorority that was founded at a predominantly white institution. Mm. So we're talking about some women who were strong, courageous, and brave. Mm. And as a matter of fact, right down the street from where our women, our sorors were living, our founders, was the grand, wasn't it? The Wizard of the KKK wow. lived on that same block wow. that our sorors had to walk back and forth, our illustrious founders. So they withstood a lot of obstacles and uh, often um, had to have some gentlemen to uh, walk them. And that is how we started off with, with our Sigma Gents or Sigma Romeos. Wow. So, wow, wow. So, yeah, so. Our organization was founded by seven school teachers, and one of the things that about our sorority was that our our sorors or our founders, they were graduate students at the time. Mm -hmm. Seven school teachers, so we are the only organization whose um, founders were actually graduate students mm -hmm. at the time. And so now, Sigma Gamma Rho has about five over 500 uh, chapters. Uh, both in the United States and abroad. As a matter of fact, we will be founding or chartering a uh, chapter in Tokyo, Japan this year. So we're going to on in October. And last yeah, year, that was a good yeah. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Yeah. So a lot of times people say, "Well, Sigma Gamma Rho, they're a baby sorority." Well, we're not. Last year was 1922. We had our 100. That was our centennial year. So 100 mm. years old. Absolutely amazing. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So our so we say the, uh, last created, best design. Oh, snap. Okay, y'all, you can write that. Okay, okay, okay. So, so something that really stood out to me is that your sorority was founded at a PWI. So you're no stranger to the, the environment, to the atmosphere of Minnesota, right? So tell us a little bit about um, the work that you all are doing in Minnesota and some of the challenges that, have maybe, that you've maybe faced, um, especially since uh, George Floyd and everything that's gone on recently. Um, one of our initiatives um, nationally is SWIM 1922 and that is our drown prevention uh, initiative. Mm. Um, we work at drown proofing kids, which there's really no way to drown proof people. People should learn to swim, but we won't get into that. Um, but we live in a land of 10,000 lakes and really honestly not very many black people know how to swim. We have the worst statistics. <laughs> so that has been our initiative for the last 12 years and we have been able to um, really actively pursue that in the last two years. Um, here in Minneapolis. So it is a thing that we do in this predominantly land that we, white land that we live in as black folks to kind of empower our own people in this place that we live. I love that. That's amazing. Let's give her a round of applause. Cause I mean, sure, y'all raise your hands. How many of y'all can swim up here? Raise your hand if you can swim. Okay. We, do you oh, swim? Okay, yeah. it's just us. It's just us. But no, that's absolutely amazing. So what I want to say this to yes, you. I am from Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Minneapolis. My mother was born in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about going to college, happened to fall into a group that was going to college, had a friend that came back and she said, did you know there were black Greeks? I said, well, what, what is that? And she showed me her scrapbook because that's when people had scrapbooks. And I, because I am first generation college educated, had the freedom to choose whichever organization mm -hmm. I chose. Sometimes women don't have that choice if it's a, you have a legacy in your family, but I was free to do that, and it was very, it's good. It's been a very good thing, and not only do I have a degree, but now I have three children. My three children have degrees, Amazing. and that is what we hope to build on in our community, that not that each one reach one, that we reach back and bring right. people along. It's not just that we get a degree yes, and have a fancy Let's job and live in a fancy applause. house, yes, but we, yeah. what we know, and that has always been our mission is that we all come up together. Yes, it's yes. not just that we have it. We want everybody to have what we have, yes. to live a life of dignity and to be respected where we go and to contribute. So anyway, that's all I've got to say. Well, you've said, let's give her a round of applause. So humble, so humble. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> all right, sir, go ahead and introduce yourself and the org that you're representing tonight. Well, what's good, Candy Fresh, Candy Fresh family? My name is Isaiah. I know, Isaiah, how you doing? Uh, 
Um, and I represent IOTA Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated, founded in 1963. We might be the youngest, but we're small in number, body and power. Here, let him, let's give this man a round of applause. Absolutely. Well, so good to have you, Isaiah. Uh, tell us a little about yourself, what brings you here tonight, and uh, your participation and your role in your org. Sure. So, born and raised St. Paul, Rondo neighborhood, represent all day, every day. But, <laughs> but when it comes to IOTA Phi Theta, we were founded in 1963. So I want to take you back in 1963 real quick. So in April 1963, America watched in horror peaceful protesters get attacked by dogs, sprayed by water hose by segregationist Eugene Bull Connor. In June 1963, Mecca Everett, field secretary of the NAACP, was assassinated in his own home in Mississippi. August 28, 1963, over 250,000 people attended the March on Washington, and here Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. On September 15th, we seen in horror four young black girls who, got, who died due to a bombing at 16th Street Baptist Church. But on Thursday, September 19th, 1963, 12 men founded a fraternity that was built upon the principles of scholarship, leadership, citizenship, fidelity, and brotherhood, and who made the motto that it takes a man, be that man, but also understood that it takes the building of tradition, but not resting upon one. In other words, we have a lot of traditions here, but what kind of legacy are you going to leave? Mm -hmm. And these men founded an organization known as IOTA, Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. Yes, sir. Let's give him a round of applause. Yes, 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 yes. And the one thing I'll say is that when it comes to my organization, we are the only ones who have a living founder still alive to this day. Absolutely amazing. Very cool. Amazing. Let's give, let's give them a shout out for that, too. All right. So I do want to ask you, you said Rondo, born and raised, right? So how does it feel to have... Uh, the MPHC now branched out from Minneapolis to St. Paul. How are you feeling about that? Oh, it feels good, because sometimes, you know, we got to go across the river. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> On both sides, though, because St. Paul, we need to come over to Minneapolis. Minneapolis, mm -hmm. you need to come over to St. Mm -hmm. Paul, because at the end of the day, we are all family in together, unified, and make it doing the work. Yes. And so it feels good, because at the end of the day, we all got to work together in order for change to happen. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, there's nothing left to be said. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. The, uh, for all of you all for being here and representing the Divine Nine. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, welcome back. Let's give it up for our official Candy Fresh band one more time. All right. Now, on this episode, we cannot talk HBCUs without the children, right? Without the youth. So here I have Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Let's give them a round of applause. All right. So I'm so excited to be here with you all. We spoke a little bit out there. We got acquainted. But for those who don't know who you are and what you do, please go ahead and let us know. All right. So my name is Nicole Foster, a member of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church uh, in North Minneapolis. And we believe what the Bible says about getting knowledge and wisdom and understanding and training. And to that, we believe in training our children. The Bible says train up a child in the way that he or she should go, and they will not depart with, from it as they get older. And so to that, we believe strongly in making the investment of time um, and exposing our children to things that are going to uh, expand and enhance their futures. And hence the HBCU tour. This will be our third tour it technically would be our fifth or sixth had it not been for that a panty whammy p pandemic. Um, but this is our third tour. We started in 2018 and we visited uh, the colleges of the Atlanta University Center, Morehouse, Spelman, Clark Atlanta, and then we did cross over the border into Birmingham, Alabama, and we saw Tuskegee. Um, the following year we did, yep, yep, I, I see you. And then uh, we did the following year we went on the East Coast and we did Howard University, Hampton, um, what else did we do? I have forgotten. Uh, Morgan State, thank you. Yep. And so this year, we're going to Louisiana, where we will visit Dillard and Grambling and Southern and Xavier and Alcorn State. So Absol so y'all have been all over the world. Like, this is absolutely amazing that you've been able to do this in such, you said, uh, four years, right? In right. such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely amazing. So I want to ask you, what, for you, um, 
where did this idea to do this come from and how did it start and how did it blossom into what it is today? You know what, honestly, uh, Progressive Baptist Church in, in the great city of St. Paul has been doing college tours, HBCU tours specifically for decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fellowship's children um, would sign up and register and tag along the Progressive tour. And folks would say to me, Nicole, I was a children and youth ministry director. I just recently retired last year in December. Mm -hmm. But prior to my retirement in the previous years, folks would always say to me, well, why don't we do our own tour? And I was like, yeah, okay, right. That's a big old heavy lift, and I know ain't none of y'all asking me about it trying to help, right? So no, <laughs> it sounds good, but I just, it was a lot. And it always kind of just gave me trepidation and fear to try to, to think that I could pull something like that off. But so then what happened in 2017, our kids, like they always do, signed up to go on the tour with Progressive, and they got put on a wait list. Mm. And one thing about me is I love my babies. I love my children. And so when I heard that they had been put on a wait list, I was like, yeah, no, nah, that ain't going to work. <laughs> That's not going to work for me. So I decided then and there that we would go ahead and do our tour at Fellowship. So that's how it was born, and uh, we've, been, we've been doing them ever since. Absolutely amazing. That's a really cool story. I love, I feel like besides obviously HBCUs, the theme of tonight is like really bridging the gap between Minneapolis and St. Paul. That yeah. is so cool. <laughs> uh, but that's, <laughs> that's another conversation for another day. I love what you're doing with the community. Congrats on your recent retirement as well. Thank you. Yes, of course. So tell us a little bit about uh, your upcoming tour, what time of year y'all usually go on tours, and how you decide yeah. where you're going to go, because you've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. Yeah, that's good. So we go every year in October. We try to do MEA week so that the kids aren't missing quite so much school. We do a five-day period. So uh, MEA week, as you know, they have the two days off. So mm -hmm. they're only missing two days of school. Um, how we pick is really um, kind of random, right? We, we sat down at my committee, and some of them are here. Um, and we kind of looked we looked at the United States as a whole and decided uh, – took a look and saw where all the schools are and kind of bunched them up into regions. And then we like one year we go down south to Georgia and Birmingham, Alabama. And then the next year is the East Coast. And this year we decided we go back south to Louisiana. So it's kind of random. Mm -hmm. um, and we just kind of decide based on where we've already been and knowing that we don't want to do too much of repeating. We want to get some new schools in there each year. So Amazing. Yeah. Now I want to speak to the youth a little bit. A young lady, go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Tara Kesh, and I'm in 11th grade. And yeah. Awesome. So are you, coming, are you going to be attending the upcoming tour? Yes, I am. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you're expecting for the tour and what you're looking forward to the most. Um, I'm looking forward to, well, what I'm expecting of the tour is to like, get an experience that I never had, mm. um, to just see what it's like to be in an HBCU and to be around people like me mm. and see what it's like. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're going to have a very good time. I'm sure you all are very excited. Um, and I just want to be clear, are all of you attending the tour this fall? Yeah. Very cool. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask you, young lady, um, what? tell us a little bit about from what you know, because it hasn't happened yet, um, but about the process of the tour itself. I know it's over MEA break, how long you're expected to go, um, and how many schools you may be attending. So I'm pretty sure we are attending five. Five. Yep, we're attending five. Um, our itinerary is like jam packed. Um, we're able to tour the campus, kind of stay on it, understand what the life is like of those students. I think one of the most um, important parts of touring a college is actually being there whilst everyone else is there, really seeing how it works when it's actually like live and everyone is there and, and it's, it's everyday life instead mm -hmm. of touring it when it's kind of like a ghost campus and everyone's back at home. But um, it's, it's, it's really important and I, the time that we're spending there, I mean, we get to all be on the bus together and it's not like we're like flying from place to place. I mean, it, it's, it's community building on the, on the bus and on the campus and, and we all get to enjoy it together and really understand. I mean, majority of us haven't been to Louisiana, majority of us haven't been to these schools. And so to tour these schools and to see everything together, it's like an experience that we all get to create as one and it's 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 really nice that sounds amazing y'all are going at the right time october if my <laughs> math is correct it'll be getting a little cold around here so i love that y'all are going to the south and going to have that full-on experience so for you how did you hear about this amazing program and what were the steps you took to get involved and get signed up 
So um, I went to fellowship um, when I was younger. My parents are still heavily uh, heavily involved in our church's community. And so they have connected with all of these amazing women um, who pretty much were like, I I'm a senior. So mm -hmm. I'm going into my senior year and I'm also an athlete. Mm -hmm. So college has been like super important to me since freshman year. And so um, my dad, he's super big on just like making sure that like I stay with my roots. Mm -hmm. And so he connected with them after knowing that they've been doing this and they're going to continue to do it. And um, he knows that even if, um, because a lot of HBCUs don't have the dance team that I'm a part of, even if it's something that's not in my future, to understand it and to work with it and to be a part of the community and see the people around me grow and be in that community mm. is extremely influential to my character. That's absolutely amazing. Let's give her a round of applause. It's absolutely amazing. Okay. <laughs> now, as a senior, um, this year it goes by fast, girl. It does. Um, but as a senior, uh, you know, taking those steps to look at the next chapter in your life, what is something you would tell a freshman that is interested in maybe joining this um, this group or even just interested in an HBCU? I would say absolutely don't rush it. I think because I was an athlete, I was always so focused on college that I kind of let the high school years like escape and slip away. Mm -hmm. But um, also understand that your education and just the people that you keep around you socially are so important. Mm -hmm. And it helps you understand who you want to become mm -hmm. and what kind of communities you want to be a part of. Because even though these are all HBCUs and they're predominantly in all black communities, there's different types of people. And there's mm -hmm. company that you want to keep. And there's people that you want to be around. And you have to understand as an individual what type of growth you want to have. Where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself in five years? Mm -hmm. And so just understanding that and, and keeping, in, keeping it in the back of your mind of this is who I want to become and these are the people that are like me and these are the people who aren't like me but who have great ideas and great mindsets and continue to help me grow. Absolutely. And I think that's what this, this tour is definitely about. Amazing, absolutely. Let's give her another round of applause. Awesome. <laughs> All right. And Miss Nicole, yes. for, for yes. parents that may be watching, how can they get their kids involved and what are the age groups that you all accept for your tours? Okay, so it's senior high strictly, so 10th through the 12th grade. Um, and they, it's membership at fellowship is not a requirement. So this tour, matter of fact, I think only four of our kids, uh, we're taking a group of 25, mm -hmm. and only four of those 25 are actual members of fellowship. So it's very much open to the community. St. Paul, Minneapolis, we got folks from Wyzetta, and Hopkins, and everywhere. So um, we go every year in October, but the tour actually opens up, the application process opens up at the beginning of each year, so January. Uh, we'll have information on our website, uh, www.fellowshipmb, M for missionary, B for baptist, dot org, www.fellowshipmb.org. So starting in January, you can be look on the lookout for information about the tour opening up and the registration process opening up. We'll announce where that year we're going. Um, so yeah, just be on, be. Uh, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Uh, what's that new one? X. We don't do that. We, we're, right. we're not. <laughs> Twitter. <right>. Twitter. <laughs> <whatever. laughs> Tweeting. Um, but yeah, follow us on social media uh, around about January, and you'll you'll find that information there. Awesome. And I just have one more question for you. As a community member, if I wanted to, or if any of these folks in the audience or anybody watching wanted to help out and give back, is there an opportunity to do so? That's awesome, yes. Um, we are always taking donations. If you visit our website, www.fellowshipmb.org, there is a give section that you can click on, and then you'll find um, a designation for the HBCU tour that you can give in that way. So just visit our website and give that way. We are taking any and all contributions. 25 kids is a lot. Going all the way down to Louisiana is a lot. Uh, we gotta eat, we gotta have, have some, some place to sleep. Uh, <laughs> so we'll take any and all donations. I did want to say this too. So it, the tour is not just the trip, the actual traveling in October, but we also, you heard me say the registration opens up in January. Well, why so early? Because round about spring, we start uh, learning sessions. So we do like four workshops whereby we introduce these young people to uh, topics like um, 
financial aid and scholarships, right? You know, that's huge. Um, we introduce topics like finding your school, like what's your field of study? And then whatever that field of study is, what school will best fit that for you? Uh, we teach them how to write a personal statement um, and essay writing and things like that. So it's not just the traveling to those schools, but it's also getting there and being prepared for college just in general, wherever they might land. So Absolutely I wanted to make sure amazing. to point that out too. Absolutely amazing. Well, let's give her another round of applause. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you all. And I'm so excited to hear about the tour. Let's give them another round of applause, y'all. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show love, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show love, get your shine on. All right, y'all, you have just watched the second episode of season five of the sweetest show in the Twin Cities. My name's Shakira, holding it down while our co-host Anahita is on vacation. I just want to take some time to thank our sponsors, National Endowment for the Arts and Children's Minnesota, and of course, all our lovely guests today. Again, thank you so much for tuning in for the second episode of the sweetest show in the Twin Cities. You are watching Candy Fresh.